All right. Uh, we spoke the first time about uh, the demonic world, the second about possession, and the third talk, it will be about exorcism. Um, of course, to question if you desire. Exorcism is a prayer that may finish, maybe finish in just half an hour, an hour, three hours. Some cases they need months. Many cases they finish from three sessions to twelve. I had cases just one session of one hour. A true demonic possession always. Always I, I needed half an hour at least. Uh, demonic influences, not so much, not so much time. But there are some cases that they have a cross. They are a proof from God and they have to carry for years. I have been called to places abroad where there was a very, very good pastor with permission of the bishop that he was praying for years. He fasted, he did sacrifices, everything. And he said, Father, I don't know what, why this case continues. What more I can I do? And I always say, do not worry. It's the experience of many priests in the world that even if you do all in your hand is a proof from God. God wants this person to embrace the cross. And his suffering will give many help, a lot of help to many people in the world. That is something that has been said to us in at least one case I remember now that uh, it did not finish, it did not finish but the demon was forced to say to us by God, have faith have perseverance all you do you will see the fruit in the future and one day he said, the demon what you are doing helps people many places in the world, even in the Tibet. For prayer in the spiritual world, there is no limits, no frontiers. Then God permits a person to carry a harder cross to help people that they have no help at all because they live in a mountain, in a forest, and or even in a country that they have no missionaries, then exorcism is a fountain of help for people that otherwise they will have no help again against the demonic forces. In every exorcism, the spirit inside call other bad spirits to help him. And even if you are praying just for a person, many, many demonic forces may be there. But the priest call angels, saints to help him. Then every exorcism in some way is a fight between the forces of light and the forces of darkness. I understood that every exorcism uh, weakens a little more the power of hell on earth. Every exorcism weakens a little more the power of hell on earth. In other cases, if you ask, what can I do about that in my parish when I be a priest? Just to pray. In the S most simple way pray in the most simple way do not go into complicated prayers systems and no 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 yes somebody needs your help pray for him many times you will help people just with your word other times you will help people with your deeds 
just carrying somebody in your car or just giving food or a donation or but there are other times that you will help people with prayer if they ask you to pray for them pray for them with private prayers addressed to God you may pray for everybody even if there is a group of prayer and suddenly in the middle of the laws to God and the glory to God somebody become furious blasphemies and do not stop continue praising God if you see that is demonic possession when the group finish is time of singing, praying, everything you may say to that person to telephone the exorcist of the diocese but continue many ca cases finish in the middle of prayers of group charismatic or not um, because the demons they could not resist the glory of God mm. As you see, you may do many things, many things. But uh, remember not to see demons everywhere. Eh? It's only extraordinary when there is something that may be explained only by the presence of a demon inside. Do not see demons in every scene we may seem without the temptation of demons we may have bad habits without a demon at our side psychological uh, explanations are true if they heal the person if they do not help the person you may try with prayer even from the beginning you may try with prayer but in some cases it's very clear they try the psychological way for years, for months and God wants we know the truth because the truth because sometimes in just one session the problem finished forever I have experience of that uh, I remember a case of a doctor that uh, she spent her wages the first week every month he had ludopathia. Ludopathia is the pe the person that uh, spend all the money in gambling. Gambling? Gambling. Yes. Ludopathy. Wow. Ludopathy. Wow. Is the person that spend the whole money in gambling, and uh, she went to psychiatrist for two years. Nothing. She thought perhaps it's something from the demon because I did my best to finish this uh, sickness. And um, she went to me, I prayed for her, I saw no sign at all. I prayed for some minutes, four minutes, four or three minutes, no more. And I say, sorry, but I see in you nothing that make me to think that there is something preternatural in you. No reaction to the prayers. Then. She was very disappointed. She desired that be a demon because she tried the psychological way and he had no, she had no result. She understood that she was condemned to continue with that sickness. But she called me a week later and she said, Father, I had from that day no, no inclination to gambling, to gamble. And I thought, let us see a week more later or a month later. She called me again and again for months, now years. She never fall again. Eh? That was from the demons. Probably not. Probably it was just something natural. But the truth is that uh, God healed the sick, not only exorcise the demoniacs and it's the same power eh? then pray pray if the people ask from you prayers pray eh? 
some other times is or we our task is not only to pray we have to speak sometimes our actions what they need yeah. but everything is natural except we see a clear preternatural reaction and even in the cases that appears that fury anger and everything we have to be careful it's better the specialist to discern the case I suggest always in the diocese if somebody goes to a priest to discern the case say telephone this number call to this number because there are cases that you will say that's very clear and it's not yeah. always direct the people to the specialists always cases that seem very clear are not mm -hmm. and uh, you may pray for everybody that's true and for places and please pray for the souls in purgatory there are souls for centuries there are souls in, in purgatory that they are there for centuries nobody remembers them that is something that we have discovered through that world too and about exorcism somebody asked me if somebody goes to the confessional and he says father I have that bad habit anything do I have to do a little exorcism silently you may do you may do if you do it will work of course but uh, have clear idea that sins are because we want to to fail if we do not want to fail do not fail the will is free we may be very weakened but at the same time we do what we want to do if we are so weakened that we cannot avoid sin there is no sin sin is when you can avoid the sin then have very clear idea free will is a gift that never nobody lost every time we do not want to sin we do not sin we sin when, when we want we cannot say oh he was confused his intelligence if he was completely wrong and he did not see the evil of that action he did not sin if he was so weak that he cannot avoid the sin he did not sin sin requires that you know that that is a sin and you want to do that's very important to state in a very clear way because demon or demons are around the free will yeah. but uh, you have to address directly to the free will through the war through the war you have to convince that person that he has not to sin later you may pray God to help that person and you may command the demon to go out but he is not possessed really sometimes when there are very very bad habits demons come near that person to increase the number of sins and the quality but they just come to increase what is inside if a person if a priest in confessional command that demon to go out okay he will be out it will be like, like a wall for a time but if the sin is inside the will do not want to avoid a sin he will continue sin without the demon only if the will want to, wants to avoid the sin it will help not that demon to be at the side but if you expel that demon but the person 
that they sin again, the demon will return. I have never done that about commanding a demon to go out from a person that was in the confessional. Never, even silently, no. But I, I look with good eyes the praise they do. But remember, the center of everything is free will. Free will, not the demon. And especially in everything, do not be centered in the demon. Do not be centered in that. Because when we speak about sins, without demons, people will sin too. In any field, perhaps not so many times, but they continue. Demons try the person to do something in quality worse. That is true. And it is true that people that have a very bad habit, usually they have a demon that want to do earnings from that wickedness. And they are very often visiting that person to fall again, to fall again, to fall again. And it is true that the strength of the person is so weakened that the demon knows, I come to that person, I tempt, and he falls. I will come tomorrow, and he will fall again. They are very proud of their power. And the the individuals say, I don't know, because I sin, but believe me, it was not a great temptation. It was just that temptation comes, and I fall without resistance. That is the mechanism uh, that works in the soul. But the priests have to be centered in God. It's very bad when some priests, when they do homilies, they always speak against sin. That is very bad. We have to be centered in God. Homilies cannot be all the time going around the sins. They are priests that they only give moral sermons. The world of homily is so wide. Theology, the Bible, the teachings of the Lord, the sins are part of that world, and hell and demons. But mostly we have to speak about the good news, not about the fight against sin. If you are centered in God, you will speak about the joy of the of the of the new that you are announcing, uh, of the new life, of how good is good, but you cannot be all the time speaking about bad things. I have to speak many times about demons. Uh, it's my work, but uh, because it's my speciality. But in my homilies, demons almost do not appear uh, in the whole year. Almost. And I try to understand that I have to increase the love of that people I have before me. Not to uh, some, some priests, they uh, regañar. Uh, they are very furious in the sermons always. Avoid that. But avoid that. Eh? Do not be centered in the fight against evil. Many spiritual lives are on that way. Many spiritual lives, they are doing all the time examination of conscience. When they go to prayer, they all the time say, Oh, I am nothing. I am nothing. I, I fall again. Uh, I'm not worthy. Uh, that will be a beautiful prayer one day, two days, but cannot be the prayer of the whole life. Even if you are a sinner, okay, but now go to do your mental prayer and think about other topics. But I am a sinner. Think about God, think about how much Christ loves you, everything. Don't have a, a spiritual life, personal spiritual life. I don't speak about homilies already. Do not have your spiritual life centered in yourself. You know how few things are you. Now you have to throw yourself into the mystery of God. 
however you are. Yeah. And speaking with the people when you are in a parish, when you be in a parish, remember that. Jesus, the first thing that he did always, see the gospel, was to announce the good news. Later, of course, he tried they to repent, they try he tried they to be converted to God. But the first announcement is a joy. Eh? I think that this is something very important. Eh? And even in exorcism, a great part of the exorcism, a great part, is just Psalms, readings of the Bible, glory to God, litany of saints, and only at the end, a prayer to God, to God, for He to deliver that person. And finally, finally at the end, exorcisote. Yeah. I, uh, there is people that they think exorcism is all the time exorcisote. I command you, tell me that. Uh, no, that will be a very bad way to do exorcism. Just pray to the Lord, give glory to the Lord, be centered in God during the exorcism. And when you are with love of God, when you are full of the anointing of the Holy Spirit, when, then you will command to the Spirit. And if He does not command, He does not obey you, again to God, again to God, you will try again, time later. And if you spend the whole hour or two hours on that way and nothing happened, nothing happened, do not worry, do not worry. You will have another possibility next time. But I have seen priests commanding 20, 30 times the same order to the demons, and they do not. They, they do nothing. One point that I have understood with the years is that we have to be in the exorcism center in God, center in the mystery of God. Completely concentrated in the presence of God. And in some moments, we address to the demons because we have to. I think that is a good lesson for spiritual personal life and even for uh, the priest's life. And you may examine your lives until that moment, my life. In what it was centered. Because if you are centered in God, you have the joy of God that has created you, has forgiven you, He will He will save you. If you are centered in yourself, you all the time are sad is are sad. I, I cannot do anything and ruin things like that. Yeah. Okay, and um, it's very good to have holy water at the entrance of the of the churches, because when you do that, it's a symbol of cleansing, before of purification, before entering the presence of God. All religions uh, uh, suggest purification or commands, command purification before. Prayer. That is something that you have to to teach to the faithful. And the second is that if you do that, um, you are more protected against distractions. When if you take the holy water and when you are doing that, you do like arming you with a shield against temptations of demons of distraction. If you do that with that intention, be sure when you be seated on the pew, perhaps you will have distractions, but they will come from you, not from the demons. If you have asked that with faith entering into the church, 
you will have distractions only for you. That's a wonderful power that is in that sacramental. Of course, if you do in a way that are completely distracted, almost the effect is nothing. Almost the effect is nothing. It's not just something automatic because I, it's not something magic. Eh? No. You have to do with faith, with faith, and God gives you that. Eh? But the symbol of purification and the protection of demons are the two sides of this sacramental. I do not know more sides. I have been reflecting for a long time, but these are the two sides that are in holy water. Um, questions, questions. I, I would like to say something more. I would like to say something more that uh, will um, be, will be complementary to the words of the bishop. There, there, there is people that is hung, hungry to fight against demons. There is people that have the ambition, the greed to be like a hero fighting with demons and of course uh, that kind of individuals uh, are very dangerous in group of prayers um, and there is a protagonism that is the worst for them because I have seen so many of them to fall into, prow into pride such a pride that finally I had to say out of the group. In some cases, the only possible remedy was to say out completely. Uh, I understand perfectly his words, and not only for priests, for lay men is very dangerous too. Uh, that great of to be like a warrior and against the forces of evil. But at the same time. I have found that some people, some people, because there is such a necessity of a priest dealing in this uh, field, some people perhaps may have a little of, like a kind of vocation. If you feel that vocation and you try to purify and there is no greed and you do through obedience, there is no problem in the future, at the beginning, or when you are priest for some years, to say to your general vicar or anybody, I feel that inclination, yes, I present myself to you. Because in some cases, I have seen that perhaps there is a kind of vocation to that as other priests, they have vocation for poor or for the sick, or uh, but uh, it is true that um, it's very suspicious many times. But there are true cases of people that God gave the inclination to help people to to those persons. In my case. Uh, I have no opportunity to think about that. Never I thought I was going to work in this. Never, never, never. I could think that I will be um, perhaps a teacher in, in seminary or um, bishop, but no exorcist. Uh, even Pope, there was a possibility, I consider, <laughs> but no exorcism. Uh, I assure you <laughs> that I thought, what I could do if I will be Pope in the future? But never I thought, what I could do if I will be exorcist? So never passed through my mind. But, very interesting. When I was ordained, a, a seminarian one year uh, younger than me, he said to me, you have to, to see that person of the charismatic renewal. I do not belong to the charismatic renewal, and there is very rare. That was 
the first person of the charismatic renewal I knew and I was ordained you you see how rare it is there and uh, he prayed for me and he told me I remember perfectly oh father you will be the most famous exorcist in Spain I heard that and I did not pay a lot of attention because I thought, well, this person is so obsessed with the idea of fighting the demons that he everything understands on that way. And I forgot completely that, that idea. I forgot so completely that when my bishop said to me, you have to, to do the tesina about this topic, I did not remember that. I did not remember and later, when he uh, he gave me the appointment as exorcist, I did not remember. Only I remember when I was going to publish my first book, and one day I was walking at the sidewalk with another person, and I said, oh yes, that person told me that. But uh, you see, the plans of God always, always finally are done. I had no interest, I did nothing, and finally what God wanted happened. Uh, then, that is for all of you. He has a plan for each one of you, even for you. Uh, he has a plan for each one of you. A wonderful plan, beautiful, is the plan of God for you, specifically for you. We do not know is something very uh, that people will, uh, will admire or just will be pastor in a parish, uh, but he even knows the parish that he will give to you. Just let God's plan to be deployed in your life with freedom. Eh? Do not try to if you go to prayer, he will say what you have to do in the next step. You have not to worry doing plans. Just uh, what I have to do today. Do not try to, to say to God, oh, I think I'm going to waste my life if I do not ask um, that he sent to me to run or No, 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 no. Let him to be done what he wishes eh? because he has a plan for each one it's not a beautiful plan only for Father Fortea it's a plan for each one wonderful, wonderful not all the plans are in the top of the candelabrum eh? but uh, God knows in the center of the hair who is the important and uh, you can do more than a cardinal uh, in a little parish. That is completely true. One person can do more than a cardinal in a little parish. Then do not have greed for uh, appointments or... No, no, no. Just God knows what he has to do. Eh? Thank you, Father. Um, uh, the question I have goes back about 20 minutes ago. Um, <laughs> it has to do, uh, you, you had said that, ex, that uh, possession is relatively rare. Um, but I'm wondering if, especially in today's society, modern consumeristic society of the United States, where, in fact, human beings uh, were encouraged to foster bad habits, to... Um, uh, to sort of support the society, this culture of death that's, that's around us, if in fact obsession is becoming much more common, and specifically when you have a situation where someone's coming to you in the sacrament of confession with a repeated sin, a repeated habit, um, yes, there's that natural element of a habit there, but is that also, uh, could that also be a kind of obsession you spoke about you spoke about uh, demons often amplifying uh, the habit. Would that be considered a kind of obsession? And then if so, 
would you say that obsession is actually not so uncommon by comparison? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, but uh, the old word, the old term, Latin term, obsessio, is not demonic influence. It's not the same. Uh, obsessio is going around a city that you are going to, to take, or even going around a person, somebody, a lion around a person, that is obsessio of the word obsidere in Latin. Uh, demonic influence is an internal demonic influence is when the influence influence is inside you. Uh, I think that the term obsessio, the best is to change for a word that means exactly the same, but gives the possibility of no confusion with the psychiatric term is. Um, uh, now I do not remember and I was the one who looked for the word <laughs> well I will I will remember but the word obsessio I think is very problematic because we are speaking in a field that we have to use many times the word obsession in the other sense then um, it is true that demons or many times around us and like lions when they see a deer that is uh, sick or old or they they look at them and they go more around him because they see it would be an easy prey but uh, remember at the same time that uh, they just help what is inside uh, it is true that uh, if we could see the spiritual world, we will see very often angels and sometimes demons going to that person, to the other, going away, other coming. There are demons now here. Well, perhaps, perhaps there are three or four. Perhaps they are so upset for the talk that they say I do not want to hear that eh? sometimes you are in the church and not even want to be there sometimes in the church from far they see something and they go to tempt to a person sitting in the pew just a temptation I agree with you there are demons around it's a question of measure how many or, or the importance. Clearly, I prefer to think that everything is centered on free will, about sins. And uh, I'm sure that if a person say, it doesn't matter what kind of bad habit, if he say, Lord Jesus, I have fallen so many times, but I offer to you to resist one month I will do my best with all my strength just one month if he resisted with his strength with the grace of God you, uh, he will see that after a month temptations are completely weakened yeah? it's a good remedy I, I advise everybody yeah? Is is almost answered your question? Yes, you did. The, the, the image of a, a lion circling a weak or a sick animal is more useful than the image of, say, harassment or obsession. <laughs> but they are outside, outside. Some demons very often go with a person but always outside and not all the time. Yeah. It's inside when the priest pray and something inside began to hurt, to oppress. That is rare, but it's very much more common than demonic possession. When somebody has that inside, there are stronger chains than Temptations are stronger, especially depression. Not 
all the people that suffer depression is from demons. But many are from demons. Because when we pray, the person feels something hurting inside. That is the reason I say that. It's not a theory I have seen. And when I pray and something inside appears, I say, you suffer sadness, terrible sadness. And always they say, yes, yes. How do you know? I was smiling. A demon cannot be inside without giving you that feeling that you cannot you cannot uh, resist more that you are sad that everything is gray eh? is the first thing that people feel when they have a, an influence eh? father a couple of years ago there was a movie that came out called the exorcism of emily rose and uh, I, I know you're probably familiar with it in in the movie the the young lady was possessed by six demons um, who was otherwise, she was uh, a practicing Catholic who, who was otherwise in the state of grace, as far as we know. Um, the question goes to what you were saying about free will. Is it possible for someone who is in the state of grace, frequenting the sacraments, to be possessed against their, their will, or is it always an act of the free will to invite in the demons? Hmm. Thank you. Well, unfortunately, uh, it's possible. I knew cases that they were in the grace of God, they did nothing more, but they went to Mass, and they confessed, and they become possessed. Mm -hmm. Uh, I understand that the theory could prefer to say no. If you are in the grace of God, you cannot suffer that. But in some cases, I interrogated very much that person. I remember in especially one... I knew her for five years. I knew more her than persons of my family. And uh, I'm sure that she's telling me the truth. And she told me she was all the time in, in the grace of God and, and she did nothing to be possessed. I had cases of children, very good children, 11 years old, then uh, possession is possible, yes, even being in the state of grace. The more you pray, you are more protected, but possession affects only to the body. The soul is completely free. That is the reason it could be possible. But those are exceptions. More all the people that is possessed is because they went into danger. Most of the cases. Yeah. Next question. Is there a distinction between the, I guess, not obsession, but the word that you're looking for, that, uh, bet- of those of great sanctity, like St. John Vianney being kept up all night, or St. Aloysius Gonzaga, and uh, what is the distinction between that, that type of demonic, uh, I guess, not obsession, because we're not using that word, but uh, <laughs> activity and that activity, which happens to more... Uh, normal people, I guess. Well, not, I mean, le- le- those of significantly less virtue. Um, is there a distinction between that type of activity or an influence and temptation? And that's my question. Hmm. Well, uh, no, the, the, the action of the spirits are completely invisible. You do not realize of the action of them then uh, never you know when temptations come from yourself, when there is something speaking to your ear or not, putting speeches, intelligibles into your mind. They can be images, or memories, thoughts, words, repeating. Um, and there is no possibility to know if there is something insisting around you or it comes from you. We can have suspicion it comes from a demon when a temptation is very insisting and very vehement. And there is no natural reason for that. One example. If you read a book against the faith, 
they call Da Vinci, for example, is reasonable, you will have doubts of, against the faith. But it's not so reasonable that a good nun uh, like Mother Teresa of Calcutta, suddenly one day he suffered terrible temptations against the faith. And so vehement and for so long time. Mm. I remember a case I read, a mystic, uh, Javiera del Valle. She wrote a beautiful dictionary to the Holy Spirit. And uh, she said that when she decided to serve the Lord, she began that way. And she increased her ascetical life. And after half a year, suddenly one day, he wake up in the morning to begin the day, and it was like a voice saying, God does, does not exist. And it was so terrible, that temptation, that continues for half a year. Every day had the sensation that God did not exist, and she was wasting her life. But one day, everything finished. The temptation finished, and it was the opposite. She had the sensation of the certitude of the faith in such a strong way, she said. And she later said, I was sure that was a temptation from, from the demons. You may find things like that in many, many saints, St. Ignatius of Loyola in the autobiography. Even he has suddenly the, the temptation of commit suicide against the faith, everything, it is stopped later. And many, many saints, you will find the night of the soul beginning suddenly and finishing suddenly at the beginning of the mystic life. Yeah. One question more. Hopefully I can uh, phrase this correctly. Um, I've read your book, Interview with an Exorcist, and also Father Amor's two books on deliverance. And something that really um, kind of jumped out at me that I think would be good to discuss uh, with our future priests and priests that we have here is where do you, um, and, and it's question 84 in your book, uh, what is the difference between an exorcism and a prayer of deliverance from a demonic oppression? Uh, and what I've learned through the reading is that uh, when an exorcism is needed when a demon overtakes somebody's body and it's really about the body um, the deliverance is prayer can be done uh, you know with a priest or lay people or through say um, healing and deliverance the charismatic renewal etc um, there is you refer to woundedness that you know um, a lot of people suffer wounds through uh, their own neglect or sin or through what other people have cast onto them curses or through abuse things like that and there's what you, you, you call clinging spirits that don't want to go away and they want to make the person suffer and they don't want any spiritual or emotional healing to occur in those people and uh, if you could address that a little bit more uh, I think it would be very helpful because they're going to be faced with so many people at times coming to them and trying to discern, you know, is this really a case of exorcism or do, is this really a woundedness where we need to, you know, have deliverance prayer and be freed from that? All right. Well, uh, I do not like very much the ecstasies. There is people that need to be healed from internal wounds. That's very clear. There is... There are individuals with such a bounds, wounds, and, and they need healing through law, through prayer. Even psychiatrists may agree with that, even not believing in the spirit. But I do not like very much some groups that anybody need healing from wounds. And if they say, no, I do not see any wound in me. Oh, you have... Wounds that you do not know. I do not see that clearly, really. I think that exorcism is needed when there is 
possession of the body if somebody is in convulsions crying out and in a furious way blaspheming I will say it's possible he needs exorcism if there is a person that when the group pray he feels something inside very that hurt it's possible he needs uh, uh, the deliverance prayer but not everybody but not everybody if there is a person with a boon he may need that healing but not everybody needs that that is my position perhaps there are little wounds like uh, I do not forbid completely that companion but uh, it's something that the person can deal with that only with prayer, reading the Bible and nothing more not the remedies for everything come from from prayer some, some things may be resolved just yes, with uh, reading the Bible and to fight against that nothing more at the same time never I understood I tell you truly about the he- intergenerational healing uh, I do not say that is not correct no 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 uh, the only thing I say is never I understood that concept I have asked many many uh, persons that work in that for years very good to explain me that and I cannot see clearly the, the, the theory of that I have the suspicious that it works because prayer is good for everything but I do not say that I am true I may be wrong just I tell you I try with all my forces to understand and I do not see clearly about the intergenerational healing I cannot see how that can affect a person because if we are centered in the free will if we are centered in the terms that appear on the letter on the letters in the letters of St. Paul in the New Testament I cannot see clearly how we can uh, include that but uh, at the same time I'm not saying I, uh, I have the truth uh, no, no only I want you to know that you have the freedom to think whatever you want it's not this that somebody come here say something and I have to believe it no even in my case I give you my experience but except what appears in the Bible and in the uh, teaching of the church think whatever you think I have no dogma about that uh, and I tell you truly the, when I am speaking with a group and somebody say I do not think that and we are arguing with uh, with um, with wars in favor in, in, in opposite to that I think that that is constructive eh? you do not have to believe me just because I am here yes I share the experience and that works the same for anybody in your life up here speaking about this invisible world you have to believe what is in the Bible and the teachings of the church about the rest of the things many times taking your hair and we will see in the future uh, guard in your hair and we will see because uh, it's a mysterious world eh? then that is my personal opinion but perhaps in five years I will say no I have changed my mind Mm -hmm.